Star Ocean is dead. After a gorgeous first outing on Super Nintendo and an innovative sequel on PlayStation, the franchise has flatlined. A mediocre third outing with a twist despised by the fanbase, leading into an abysmal fourth game and a fifth game that shouldn't have been made with the budget on hand. Without a major shakeup, Star Ocean will never awaken from its nappy time. That's why we have three experts ready to revive the series. They will present their pitches for the future of Star Ocean, but only one can win. Welcome to the Boiler Room. This is Armchair Devs, Star Ocean. Welcome to Armchair Devs, Star Ocean. I am your host, Mr. Feel, and today we will be getting three pitches for a new Star Ocean game from three candidates. Those candidates are Bob Video Games from Gigaboots.com. What's up, everybody? KZ Excellent from KZExcellent.com. I'm happy to be here. And Eric from somewhere. I have my sweatpants on. I'm channeling all of my power. <laughs> That's good to hear. You're going to need it to defeat Bob's winning streak. Now, as always, we're going to open with our elevator pitch. Each contestant will have 30 seconds to give their elevator pitch for their vision of Star Ocean. And we will start with since he has never been on this show before, oh, Eric. <laughs> All right. And once I find my fucking stopwatch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Eric, we're going to need your elevator pitch. You will have 30 seconds from when you start talking. Mm hmm. <sighs> Star Ocean is a franchise that has waned in recent years. With a middling fifth installment and moderately successful gotcha game, Star Ocean is only just clinging to the public consciousness. The series needs to embrace what makes it unique, which is the Star Trek feel and the original gameplay ideas, while ejecting what makes it crap, the paint-by-numbers theming, and most of the rote anime bullshit. The game that can do that is Star Ocean, Prosody of Adolescence. And time. <laughs> Very concise. Thank you. Next, let's go with our reigning champion, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> 30 seconds from when you start talking, Bob. Star Ocean 6, Seekers of Justice, fully embraces the space travel in a way the series never has before. With a fully explorable planetary system and an upgradable starship, it's set in star date 792. You play as rookie space police officer Ridge Lion as he chases the pirate Carbonet Nelson across a bizarre, unexplored planetary system. The two soon discover that they will have to work together if they want to solve the mystery of the ancient symbologists and escape the system alive. And that's time. Well done. I got a real strong idea of your pitch. And last, but certainly not least, in harming me, uh, KZ Excellent. From the moment you start talking, buddy. <clears throat> Star Ocean has had its ups and downs in recent memory. But this time we are going to be delivering a experience for both fans and first timers of the franchise. In Star Ocean Beyond, you play as a rookie mercenary Axel Sidewinder as he teams up with a mysterious girl from space and a reality bending adventure. What is this mysterious power she has? And can we solve the issue of her amnesia? Find out in Star Ocean Beyond. And time. Everybody got theirs in just under the 30 seconds. Very well done, everybody. Now, I'm going to ask you all some questions about your, um, about your pitches, or about your game idea, rather. And we'll start with, uh, we'll start with Eric. Mm-hmm. Now, Eric, Square Enix's biggest franchises, Kingdom Hearts, Final Fantasy, they've been doing a lot of crossover lately, mm -hmm. uh, Noctis was in Tekken. Even 2B was in uh, Soul Calibur. It's important to increase mind share with crossovers with other franchises. So I have to know, do you have a crossover planned with your game with another title in the industry? Hmm. What a question that I totally have an answer for. <laughs> <laughs> This is dangerous. Allow me to rifle through my 
extensive notes to make sure I, I have that answer. I am scared now. <laughs> I am horrified. He's playing hardball. We're going to say... The Halo franchise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Master Chief is going to have a sword. <laughs> so, wait, you're getting Master Chief in your game? Absolutely. <laughs> we can get him. <laughs> That's an impressive poll. Don't doubt my clout in this industry. <laughs> well, I'm sure that would make for a very strong news cycle surrounding it which helps to sell games. Yep. Now, KZ. Yeah? I need to know. There's a lot of modern gaming trends uh -huh. that are all very popular these days. Class-based shooters, gotcha mechanics, battle royales. Which one of these will you be ham-fisting into your title to cheaply increase appeal? <laughs> uh, we're just gonna have a season pass. And it's gonna, like, it's at, at launch, it's going to give you boosters and other items to make the main game easier. And then in like eight months, there's going to be like a story expansion thing. Bold and traditional, if a little outdated. <laughs> how, how can you ring people for money with that? <laughs> no one cares about this franchise for me to be able to get away with it. <laughs> Brutally honest. Now, Bob. <laughs> oh, no. An important part of Star Ocean is the skills. There's crafting, characters can learn to pickpocket, to play orchestral instruments. <laughs> it honestly borders on psychotic. Yeah. So I have to know, how insane of a skill system will your game have? Oh, at uh, the most. There's no, there's no skill left unturned. <laughs> So you're saying you won't just craft your own weapons, you'll have to mine for the ore. Yeah, I mean, we have the whole explorable space system. You're going to have to mine that. There's going to be asteroids. Each planet has a di different drops. You need, to, you need to really work for this. Okay, good to hear. Core part of the series. Now, KZ, we're going to go back Hello. to you. Oh, oh, good. I have to know if you have a composer chosen. I do, in fact. Now, going through the ideas of like who, what, what we could have as a composer for the game, and honestly, we're at the point where if we try and go adventurous, we try to change things up, there, there might be some, some problems with it. So we've decided to have a main composer and a side composer for this title. That way, people don't get upset if we try to shake things up too much. Uh, main composer will be Matoy Sakuraba, who is um, known as guy who makes the JRPG tracks that all sound the same. We're very excited to have him on board. However, we are also bringing in a uh, freelance composer now, but big history with Square Enix, Takaharu Ishimoto, known for such work as Final Fantasy Type-0 and Crisis Core, as well as the Kingdom Hearts series, and more recently, Dissidia both the arcade and NT version. These are some serviceable picks. Now, back to Eric. Mm -hmm. Eric, <laughs> I'm ready. I need to know, mm -hmm. what actor have you pegged to voice your protagonist? <laughs> Why are this question so hard? <laughs> He's just like, get off the show, Eric. <laughs> I feel so welcome in this boiler room. <laughs> Is that where we are? <laughs> You're walking to the boiler room. Well, the main character, Vanessa Reeler, is going to be played by Jennifer Hale. And not just because it's the only voice actor name I could think of right now on the spot. All right. Good to hear. I completely believe you. <laughs> now, Bob. Yeah. I need to know. In addition to the skill system... There are two other important parts of the Star Ocean experience. Will Welch Vineyard and Puffy <laughs> be in your game? <laughs> what? I actually... Th there is a lot to do with them, but they <gasps> may not make a direct appearance. But their presence will be felt. Yes, they will definitely be felt. All right, that's good to hear. Now... If you recall our Final Fantasy episode of Armchair Devs, 
Each contestant prepared a drawing of uh, the villain. This time, I have had the contestants prepare a drawing of the protagonist and the protagonist's love interest to fully see their realized vision of these characters. <laughs> so first, let's see Eric. Oh, Since he is a newcomer to the show, we'll give him the privilege of going uh, first. Oh, God. All right. Well, here we go. Let me try and... All right. So the first, the main protagonist. And now I'm not cheating, but I am saying these are the two main protagonists that can also be love interests in the same way of Star Ocean 2. In Star Ocean 2, yeah. Yes. So, the first one that I'm going to post is Vanessa Reeler. Just enjoy that. I see! <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's, yeah, that's a big sword there! <laughs> she was tough. She's, she's a... She's a Miner's daughter, and she's very strong. <laughs> I'm getting, I'm getting a lot from this design. Very, it communicates many things to me. <laughs> you can tell it since you know these games look like anime, and sometimes in anime when you can see their eye through their hair, you can see that there. It translates real good. I'm getting a very strong energy of lightning from this character. <laughs> <laughs> <gasps> Eric can't draw much, but he can certainly draw armpits. Oh, yeah, mm, mm. <laughs> okay. In the boiler room, they're sweating quite a bit. <laughs> and number two, the other, the male protagonist is uh, Nicholas Hawkins. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's a book in one hand. And a knife oh, in the other. I thought oh. it was a bird. He is. Yeah, I thought he was a falconer nope. or something. No, that would be I, too I on the book. nose. I thought he was holding a pen and it was like a feather pen, and then the other thing was a book. <laughs> does now I have to mm -hmm. know, looking at this, does he have depression? <laughs> he's he seems he's very supposed upset. to be kind of a snarky asshole, and that was the best I could do with the face. Uh, does <laughs> Does he have a cape or is it raining? It's a cape. Is he V it from is Devil May Cry? It is a cape thing. Mm. We all have our limitations. Mine is capes. I am getting a very strong V energy from this character. It's a very, very small notebook. Now, I don't know how anybody's going to overcome <laughs> Eric, but KZ, I'm going to need you to try. All right. So first up, of, of our two two characters here. Uh, it's going to be the protagonist, uh, Axel Sidewinder. Put a lot of work into uh, this one especially. Mm. <laughs> oh, man, is that MS Paint? Mm. Man, that's a raw hairstyle. I can, uh, no, that's photoshopped. <laughs> I can taste this image. <laughs> you, you can tell because I added a stroke to the blending options of the text there. Ooh. Mm. Gradients. You can see he's got the he's got an extra long green spike for his hair that juts out. It covers uh his his eye. Very cool. I feel you may be pandering to the judges a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I thought Eric was hosting until twenty minutes before he started. <laughs> hmm. Wait. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, also, one shoulder pad because that's really cool. <laughs> I see he has a single red eye. Yes. Is that just to signi signify his bloodlust, or does he have a Sharingan-esque bloodline power? Now, it is it is the latter to a degree. It all links back to a special mechanic with the love interest and a special ability she has. Now... Ah, well, please introduce us to her. All right, so given that she is an amnesiac... Uh, we don't know her name for a good amount of the game. So they ended up having to name her on the spot as the story was going on. So uh, it's still shrouded with mystery. This is uh, Panini. <laughs> <laughs> That's an excellent name. Mm -hmm. Is that a gun? <laughs> one, one thing that really gets uh, Axel Sidewinder going is just she has beautiful eyes. <laughs> <laughs> she does. I can tell. 
and she has a big I gun. feel drawn into them. <laughs> I feel like you've done this before, KZ. <laughs> Uh, you know, everyone has their own style when drawing, you know? It's like if you, you know, you see, like, Tite Kubo, like, draw something, you're like, that just looks like a Bleach character. <laughs> Same with me. Now, Casey, please, please do not misname him. The man prefers to be called Tight Kubo. Ah, okay. I thought you were going to say, come on, Casey, everyone knows him from zombie powder. Now, Casey, I only have one question about Panini. Yes. How many jokes will involve her obviously massive baps? <laughs> <laughs> now, here's how it works. They, 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 they meet her, and they're trying to come up with a name. And comically, she's named Panini because Axel literally looks at a shop right nearby, and there's just Paninis there. But in the comedy cutscenes, they will talk about her boobs by calling them Panunus. <laughs> And it will happen. I see. That's it a... will happen just enough for you to be embarrassed, but not enough for it to be a problem. <laughs> That's a good balance in a anime inspired game. It's a difficult line to walk, but I believe you can do it. Bravery. That's a theme. And now the reigning champion must present his. <laughs> okay. I'm drawing. so scared. I'm, I'm not ready. <laughs> Here we go. This is going to be the, the main hero, uh, Ridge Lion. Zeppelin, there we go. Mm. <laughs> oh, <laughs> mm. <laughs> okay, I, I, I think I need to go over this a little bit. Yes. Is he a stand? So he's got <laughs> symbologist tattoos all over, all over his body <laughs> because he was... <laughs> oh! <laughs> because he was born with... Uh, Special powers. So those little uh, circles are the valve that let him release his symbolic energy because he just has too much. And uh, he's got his policeman badge on. That's what that thing is there. <laughs> <laughs> and that's his rocket shoes that he wears because he ha he's going to wear shoes. He, he has to be able to pour his power out somewhere because so we're not going to have him go around barefoot like Corrin or something. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, he's the, the son of um, was a uh, Oh my god, Fate Lion God from the last or from Star Wars 3. <laughs> so he had his genetic uh his genetic symbology power is mixed with Sophia's, who is his mother. <laughs> what what was his name again? Uh Ridge Lion. Oh, I've never he has to have an alias. I've never seen a a picture that was so right for the name. <laughs> uh it I, I hate to ask a question, but sure. Tom, what's up? Will will there be a, will there be any cutscenes in which someone makes fun of this guy for not having wrists? <laughs> <laughs> Look, KZ, we all have our limitations. Her wrists are definitely among mine. <laughs> now, Bob, I have to know what's up. This character steeped in the rich lore of Star Ocean Three was he trained by Cliff and Mirage? <laughs> yeah. I didn't think about that, but yes, that makes perfect sense. That's canon. <laughs> That's called a solid vision right there. <laughs> I am stunned at the solidity of this vision, but I'm going to need to see your love interest Here we go. to be truly sure. This is uh, the love interest. The face pirate, Carbon A, Nelson. <laughs> mm! <laughs> so... Oh, she, is, she has a plant I'm so, on her body. <laughs> she is the daughter of the fourth dimensional being, Welch Vineyard or Vineyard. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> that's a deep pull. I I liked her in Gundam Double Zeta. <laughs> so yeah, this is after three. So the the fourth dimensional beings are no longer in the universe, but we don't get real or we don't get wealth, but get we get her daughter. And I figured. The oldest looking wealth we saw was Star Ocean 4. That's why she's got the pink hair. Even though that's the earliest in the timeline, the fourth dimensional beings can do that whole, like, jumping to anywhere thing. I will say, it is incredibly brave <laughs> of you to even bring up the fourth dimensional shit and not just never mention that ever again. Right, you have to, you have to confront the, the problems if you want to move forward. You can't just keep these intercools that they keep doing. Bob, can I ask a question? Sure. I'm seeing on the lower portion of this illustration that uh, there is a I'm gonna assume a hastily erased sword 
Yeah, her original design, she had both <laughs> a sword God. and a gun. Okay, and I was okay, like, no, okay. I was like, is it a much. laser phantom sword or is it? Was, okay, all right, good. <laughs> now, you you said she was a criminal, yes? Yes. A space criminal? Of course. This is a strong pitch, I have to admit. <laughs> I'm getting a strong uh, Ryoko from Tenchi Muyo energy. Yes. That's a strong energy for your heroine to have. Her character design is going to be AD, AIC. We're going to get an intro by him. All of these characters are incredible, but we're going to have to move on a little bit. I'm going to go around. I'm going to ask each of you. You're going to tell me the one thing about your game you absolutely want to get out that you haven't been able to talk about yet. And to start, we'll go with Eric, because I just have a feeling he has the most he hasn't been able to it, say. It's... <laughs> <laughs> the one thing about the game that I most want to communicate is its themes of Star Ocean has always had this sort of Star Trek-esque element to it and the idea of a, a race going to the stars involves a sort of growing up of a whole civilization so I wanted to have a story that involves stories about what it means to grow up from a personal standpoint to a political standpoint to a civilizational standpoint and strong theming throughout that tells a cohesive story because i'm all about story a strong theme for star ocean to have kz what do you absolutely have to get out so in star ocean beyond there is a special system that is linked to our main heroine You've seen uh, it is uh, reacted to the design of the male main character. It is called the Zenith system. And it's basically a special power that our main heroine Panini has. It does something both for combat and for interacting in the world running around. When in combat, it's uh, specifically called the Quasar Drive. It warps the space around everything in combat, leading to a more visually interesting look. Uh, neon is pretty much everywhere. It enhances the attacks of your party members, gives them new moves like warping around, materializing special weapons, donning a cool, cool like armor, and cool cutscene special attacks. Think of any other action RPG where you have something that you can just pop like a devil trigger or a super mode. It works like that. And out of combat, it basically warps the dimension around the area. So the terrain ends up staying the same, but it visually looks different. And say you can't get into a building or into a cave or over a gap. But if you activate the Blazar drive that warps things around, you may find a, a few secrets to solve puzzles. I wanted a system that worked both in combat and out of combat. That's always good. It makes the game more cohesive. Mm -hmm. And we know that that is the highest priority for any game. <laughs> Cohesion is a theme of Stars and Beyond alongside bravery. Now, Bob, defend your title. Tell us the most important thing about your pitch. I think I, I've luckily I've been able to sneak a lot of things in before this. So I don't need to worry as much, but I think what I really want to get into is the open world and how we'll be able to drive around the spaceship and uh, tackle planets in different orders. Like, you don't have a set way that you have to tackle them. You'll have certain... There will be gating in this game. We'll think of it kind of like Kingdom Hearts where you're like, okay, you can only go to these three worlds at once. But it's not going to be as much like Kingdom Hearts where you just it's totally impossible to go to one of them because it's way too high a level. And you'll get a new character in each world, so that will affect the story in different ways as you go to the, or choose different paths and uh, tackle in a different order. So it will, you will have relatively linear linear planets when you get there, but the order you can do them will be relatively non-linear. Right, and then the non-linear nature of the outside of the planet will definitely affect the planet you go to because you'll have new characters to go there with. All right, good answer good thing to get out now is the part of the show where the contestants will quiz each other and ask them about the things they most want to know about their competitors pitches so uh you know kz will ask bob and eric each a question and so on 
Uh, but even though I use KZ as an example, uh, he won't be going first, Bob will. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Eric, I gotta know. Mm -hmm. How many planets are we visiting? We are gonna have a planet and a moon. It's gonna be a smaller story about basically an extended away mission. Oh. It's gonna be gonna get real deep into the planet, the politics, the story going on there. And maybe to the moon to do some shenanigans up there. So this is just like one Star Trek two-parter, but to an insane degree. Absolutely. Okay. KZ. Yes. What is the antagonistic group for your for your game? All right. So the antagonistic group is well, you've got multiple factions in this in this game that are going to be antagonistic toward you. You find this mysterious woman. She doesn't know who she is. You give her a name. You you name her Panini. She has the special dimension altering power. A lot of people want that. First, you have this evil space organization. They have this space colony arc up there, and they're specifically gunning to get her back as she is a life form specifically created by them. You also have the modern military group on the uh, on the planet. Of course, the main planet of this game is Planet Bob. A, a good not a reference to gigaboots but a reference to uh the film titan ae oh okay that's a <laughs> deep cut case. i was, yeah, I was thinking with the super nintendo we're all game about, we're all about deep cuts here so you you've got that and you also have a rival uh a rival organization that is on planet bob that's you know looking to usurp the military so you have from three different directions and the organization up in space doesn't really take hold for a while because, you know, they're the big bad toward the end of the game. And the focus is just dealing with these planet born organizations and the military uh, as you, you know, get into this world and start to understand it. And then as you continue through the game, uh, everything starts to piece together. I feel like now I have more questions to ask, but I can't because that's not, no longer my power. <laughs> Well, maybe, maybe Eric will be able to pick up the slack, possibly. Don't hold your breath. Next, Eric will ask his fellow competitors his questions. All right. So, Bob. What's up? You've detailed uh, your plan to be able to go to any planet in the system or in any order you want. You get people there, you fight monsters, whatever. They're not going to be limited by this area is too strong. So, if you can go to any planet in any order how are you going to handle difficulty oh it'll still there's still a structure of like a certain number of planets you can reach at a time so it's going to, oh okay and i was gonna say you don't want to have one, enemy scale right it's not gonna be just full scaling it will after you beat one planet the other two will let, rank up a bit mm -hmm. that sort of thing it's not going to be completely auto scaled or um uh or just have no experience or something crazy like that okay casey Yes. You've mentioned a lot about the the combat and mechanics of the gameplay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I want to know, how's the, how's the feel of the world? Is it going to be open world? Is there going to be a lot of crafting shenanigans? Is there, I mean, how, how much faffing around can you do in this game? All right. So uh, the general approach is going to be that of uh, recent JRPG titles like Xenoblade Chronicles 2. You have this large world, but it's opened up into zones. So you can free roam. There's plenty of nooks and crannies to explore and find treasure, uh, find items that you could use for crafting, that type of thing. And of course, you get to use your uh, special powers to warp the area around you to maybe find secrets and progress. And we wanted to keep what we were able to achieve with Stars and Five when it comes to combat uh, transitioning naturally so you find an enemy in the field and coming into contact it seamlessly does a battle without having to give you a zone where it's like here's a square of area that matches the zone you were in it mm -hmm. just naturally transitions into that so you'll be able to adventure across the two planets that you'll be exploring throughout the game so the area design won't be like star ocean 5 got it that that is correct <laughs> No one played that, so no one will be able to question it. Oh, what? <laughs> what did I play then? What was that? 
What collector's edition did you buy? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Next question. KZ, it's your turn G to grill your competitors in the boiler room. <laughs> Eric, Wait, here we are in the boiler, boiler room. <laughs> we are in the boiler room. I have an important question for you today. Mm -hmm. Who is the character designer for your game? I don't know if the <laughs> name has been announced yet, but whoever did the art for the uh, Star Ocean R that came out, that guy's good. Or girl, or whoever it is, we're we're gonna get them. They're on. They've the team. been locked in the wage cage, <laughs> and we'll just be transitioning onto this project. You know, brand synergy. Mm -hmm. I can see it. They're gonna do justice to my character designs. <laughs> mm, it's very, it's very good. A bit, uh, a bit unprofessional to just point and go them. <laughs> but uh, look, <laughs> Katsumi Inami, the character Thank designer you. for Bakano is a very powerful choice. All right, so, Bob. What's up? Now we get this, uh, there's a lot of angles we can go at this. Now, I think I think something really important with these, uh, with these games, uh, is, you, you, you know, this is a Square Enix joint. We, of course, you know, try a big part, the Star Ocean series, obviously. Uh, engines for video games, also important. That's what your game runs on. So I have the most important and hardest question of them all. Are you using the Luminous Engine for your Star Ocean game? No, that doesn't even exist anymore, KZ. It's 2820 now, and it's gone. What, what, are, you, what are you talking about? I am, the, I am the CEO of Square Enix. <laughs> <laughs> no, he uses Unreal, because we don't know how to use anything else. And we've got, a, we've got a team going right there. Please do not harm the brand. You have a Luminous Engine on a thumb drive in a drawer somewhere. We have a studio literally named after this thing. We put out a movie last year about monkeys. <laughs> I'm sure they'll make a great Unreal game. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your answer, Bob. Now I'm going to need a final statement from each contestant. It's been a long road. People have fought hard. But it's time for your final statements. Gotta know where you stand. Gotta lay it all out on the table. Gotta have no regrets. You will have 30 seconds to give your final statements. And as always, starting with Eric. As always. <laughs> I feel so blessed to, to have gone first once the again. The laser sight pointed on your forehead. <laughs> oh, give me a sec. Star Ocean, Prosody of Adolescence is a game where you play as Vanessa Reeler or Nicholas Hawkins. Vanessa Reeler is a native of the planet with her mother coming and going to, from the, the smithy where her, the father works. One day, Vanessa follows her, finds her mother disappear in a shaft of light. She has to get to the core of who she is as a person, find the mystery of her mother, the history at the center of the planet, and also later it's revealed that the mother's uh, main Oh, that's is time. Kevin, I'm so. sorry. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> KZ, your final statement is next. In Stars and Beyond, you take control of a mercenary, as well as a heroine and a cast of other characters as they journey across Planet Bob to take on various foes that are looking to gain this magical power, this power to warp dimensions that goes beyond anything you could expect, with it being able to reveal versions of planets from the past. The moon in this world is actually a planet and becomes an extra explorable area. Yeah. Barely at the line. Sliding in to home base at the last second. You know, that that's that's the power of Discord, baby. And our supreme champion, Bob Video Games. For the Star Ocean series to progress, it needs to move forward. We need to go farther in the timeline. We need to really acknowledge this is a space adventure series. We can't just keep doing these single planet just <laughs> filler, filler episodes. We need to get that full experience of going out into space and exploring a system. And that's what my game is going to do. Game of the year. Concise and brave. <laughs> the call out. Now that we have everyone's final statements, I need to review my notes.
now that I've reviewed my notes, I just want to give our contestants some feedback on their pitches. KZ. Hello. Your concept is strong. I like uh, the idea of warping reality to solve puzzles and get through environments. The idea of uh, the moon being a planet is very strong. But I have to say... I'm just not sure about Panunu's. <laughs> Damn it! It was a gamble. <laughs> when you hear it's delivery <laughs> by the voice actors, I think you could come to like it. Possibly, but unfortunately, you don't have them here to convince me. Fucking! If I knew that I had to get Ray Chase in this office, in this boiler room, <laughs> talking about Panunu's, I'm kicking myself. Eric, mm -hmm. be gentle. Your comparisons to Star Trek make me think you really understand what Star Ocean is about. Your crossover idea was strong. Your voice actor pick was strong. However, Star Trek is also a franchise where 70% of it is bad. So I'm not sure how much you should be leaning on that. We'll be leaning on the 30% good part, for the record. I have I have trepidation regardless. Now Bob, Supreme Champion, yeah. God Emperor. Uh huh. <laughs> your character designs are strong. <laughs> Making your protagonist the son of the protagonist of three is a bold choice. Making him a super powered Ultra Chad <laughs> is compelling. His space pirate thief rival slash love interest is another bold choice. I'm just not sure about addressing the four-dimensional beings at all. It may be a millstone around the game's neck. It's true, that because was negatively received. Sometimes you just have to never mention it again, even if you go forward from there. <laughs> just let it exist in the dark times. I'm, we're saying you have to kill the past. No, you have, the, you have to bring the past back so you, you can kill it. <laughs> burn it if you must. <laughs> now... I've thought long and hard about this, but the winning pitch for the new Star Ocean game is... Bob. Oh, Fuck! Yes! Bob. Oh. <laughs> he can't be stopped! No! <laughs> 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 oh. It was close. All the candidates had strong concepts. Bob's incredible protagonist <laughs> won me over. I looked at I looked at these casts and I'm like, I would play a game about this space cop and his space pirate rival slash heroine love interest. Tanchi Moy was a good show. <laughs> Never seen it! <laughs> I hope that Bob's vision will produce a new foundation to move Star Ocean into the future and escape the doldrums it has been in for f fuck, how long? <laughs> It's been a while. <laughs> Look, Anamnesis exists. I don't... It's a mobile game. 16 years. <laughs> <Oof>. <laughs> I'll get you, Bob! <laughs> I'll be waiting. <laughs> I'd like to thank our contestants for their long, hard battle. The winner this time, Bob's game, Star Ocean 6, Seekers of Justice. And I'd like to thank the audience for listening to Armchair Devs, Star Ocean. Thank you for listening to this episode of Armchair Devs. Podcasts like this and Big Think Dimension are only possible with viewer support. If you'd like to help us in the fight for good content, please show us your support over on patreon.com slash gbpodcasts, where you can also listen to the extended pitches that couldn't make it into this episode. This Gigaboots video was brought to you by our magnanimous executive producers. Vincent Povert, Nicholas Cameron, E. Lee Broyles, Brendan O'Sullivan, Star Falcon, Spaceman Spiff, Danny Richardson, Shadow in the Darkness, Dryzart, and Red Blaze 27. And also these guys. Head on over to patreon.com slash gigaboots today so you can try to be as cool as these people.